Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I'm Stephanie West. I'm an LPC here in the state of Michigan. Today I want to normalize something that if we gave ourselves grace in this particular area, it actually would help transition processes go a lot better for some of us. And that is humility to understand that we will overcorrect. In most cases, that's very true. So let's say you're starting out on some sort of new endeavor. Let's say you are uh, doing a new finance program, you're doing a new eating program, you're doing a new workout program. At the onset of whatever structure you've decided, strict adherence is usually very, very normal, or it should be normal if you intend to have kind of significant progress. So let's say you're doing Dave Ramsey's uh, baby steps, and you're very strictly doing, you know, steps one, two, three, four, you're getting that snowball going, and you have to be really strict with it at the onset, usually if you expect to get momentum built. Let's say you're doing a new eating style, and you've decided to do ketogenic diet, at the onset, you're going to have to be very rigid with what that looks like so that your body gets into a place where it's burning ketones instead of burning um, glycogen. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm doing a fitness nutrition course right now. It's very fun, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, I digress. What's important to understand is that strict adherence does matter, but it should not be the place that we camp out long term. And I see this so often with people that are very rigid in how they approach the world. And I'm gonna just use keto as an example. Um, as I'm working on the book and as I am you know, sharing on the podcast, I was a keto fight once upon a time and I was so militant with it. It was totally not cute. Here's why though, because once I adopted it, I went all the way over here from an unstructured eating plan all the way to the strictness of the ketogenic diet and then I camped out there for like three entire years, you know, until binge eating on the weekends took over and that was its whole thing. But you're not supposed to overcorrect and stay in some sort of strict place unless it's absolutely vital. And so one of the things we have to work on in therapy is flexibility. You should adopt a structure. And then in that structure, you should learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you and over time, you should come to a more moderate place of progress or of um, process instead of staying camped out here in a really aggressive stance. Part of maturity says, I've learned what I needed to learn and now I can adapt it and customize it for myself. So one of the invitations, you know, I talked through, I did keto and then I did macros and I, I love macros. If I want to get on a bandwagon or die on a hill, that's the one I would die on right now because again, I you know, overcorrect. Um, but one of the cool things is about, you know, six weeks ago, I had a friend um, ask me if I wanted to join a Whole30 challenge group. Whole30 is great. It has a lot of clean eating available. It really emphasizes nutrition and nutrients over anything else. And I, I love that style of eating. And when she invited me in, you know, my radical side was like, yeah, oh, I don't have glasses anymore. So I'm touching my face. Sorry. Um, one of my more radical kind of sides is like, I, I want to, you know, find the next thing and I want to go have a lot of fun with it and, you know, make big progress. As I started looking through what Whole30 entails, it makes you give up like yogurts and cheeses and cottage cheese. I am no longer willing to part with those. Those are not things that do any sort of disrepair to my body. Those are not things where I have inflammation from dairy. Those are not things that um, organically I should give up because it's there's going to be some benefit to me. I've done the work of figuring out my body. I've done the work of figuring out that dairy is not an issue for me. Things like gluten are an issue for me. Things like um, you know sugar can be an issue for me. Dairy is not an issue. So for me to go on a strict plan that eliminates something that's not detrimental for me, I could do it for sport, I could do it for discipline, I could, but I don't have to do it. I don't have to stay over in the strict posture anymore because I've taken the time to figure out what is for my good and what works for me. And part of maturity says, let's find a system, let's try the system, and then figure out what about it is sustainable for you. And then instead of just staying in a place of overcorrection, come back to a more moderate position that's just healthy. We don't have to live our life in extremes. We shouldn't be finding things and doing them to the nth degree and calling it living. Usually that's creating prisons. It's not for our betterment. My desire is to help equip people to say, for a while, you might have to get aggressive. You might have to overcorrect. And then your job is to figure out which pieces of this do I want to retain? Because not everything has to be so incredibly structured and strict. And hey, that's coming from a... a perfectionist, I'd say a recovered perfectionist, uh, hopefully. Um, but I want to give you that thought. If you're in a place where everything is highly, highly structured, 
one of the questions to ask is where might flexibility actually be beneficial to me? Flexibility is a benchmark of mental health. If you want to be intentionally well, flexibility is a part of that equation. So I want you to consider at once upon a time, did you go into a really strict posture, possibly overcorrect, very normal for us to do, but as you learn more, are you able to come back to a more moderate position and find long-term sustainable practices that are for your good, they're intentional wellness inputs into your day, but they're not some sort of rigid prisoner structure for you.